Hello, everybody. This is Angel Arts, and welcome to another episode of Let's Interview the Finalists for the Dragon Age Season 3 campaign. Today, we have Gremlin Mike back with us. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gremlin Mike. Hi. As Jordan said off camera, I love your background. <laughs> it's very on theme, at least for the Wizarding Worlds campaign. Oh, yeah. I, I was really trying to get a better backdrop than my ceiling or my kitchen. So I appreciate that. <laughs> and speaking of the Wizarding World, uh, one of the people that Gremlin Mike chose to interview him is Jordan. So welcome, Jordan. Hola. Thank you again. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so without further ado, go ahead and take it from here, Jordan. Well, um, I actually, a lot of the, these questions today are very much like geared towards the scaled ones because I think the fact that you chose that is really, really interesting. So like, they're, for the m most part, they're really undocumented and they're kind of just limited to two codex entries. So because of this, you get almost complete creative freedom. And what new aspects do you hope to bring to DA and what set and what um, sets the scale ones apart from maybe the other race, like generic races, do you think? To start off, I'm not sure how they'll differ from the other races because as I really don't know the other races that well. I <laughs> literally went and looked at all the races for DA and chose the one with the least amount of lore specifically for the reasons you were saying because I didn't. I know nothing about Dragon Age. <laughs> and so it's like, if I'm going to be able to get into it, I have to create it, make, make it my own somehow. And I felt they were my best bet. As for uh, the lore that is on them, uh, they almost came across to me as like a primal dragonborn type of sorts. Uh, they were listed as uh, worship worshiping uh, golden idols shaped like flames and uh, were possibly even shown to... Uh, uh, breathe fire at times, but those were unspecified uh, occasions. Uh, but the main thing about them was they were very uh, barbarian-like. They, they were very violent people. Mm. Um, but it, I took that to be more of a stance that they were trying to protect their own more than they were actually attacking because the, a lot of times in tribes, it uh, things can seem one way but are completely another. When you're trying to protect yourselves and everything, it can come across as an act of violence. Mm. So ultimately, since they just disappeared from record, basically, I chose to take it upon the idea that they themselves sought this sort of magic that spirited them away. Yeah. And now they're still technically underground, but they're in this weird bubble of a land out of place where they were able to finally be themselves and grow to who they are. And so since they didn't have to be violent, they became much more sophisticated and they still have battles and such, but it's become more... Uh, ceremony and ritual. Uh, the, there's battles that are rites of passage. Uh, very, very rarely is it stuff that's to the death. And if it is, it's because of very severe consequences in their lives that brought them to that stage. Mm. Uh, with that, though, they kind of, it was kind of a balance that they lost touch with actual magics themselves. They can they can no, no longer cast it themselves, but they found a way to still obtain the powers through different methods, which is my idea of they integrate it into technologies. So, like, uh, you have a flashlight that's a tor a torch. It's actually click. You have a torch, or. Uh, one thing I was playing for a short bit in the in-character was that 
uh, you have a umbrella handle type device that it actually creates a force field that is an umbrella. It's an invisible <laughs> umbrella. So things like that. Um, because I remember when I watched your interview, you mentioned the, like the mechanical mage type thing. And I think like, um, because with, with a system that's so limited to three classes, it could be so interesting to homebrew and like all the gameplay possibilities with something like that. Um, cause combat's just a part as much a part of it as the RP. So I think that's right. important too. Um, and, you know, being such an unknown race of people, do you see, like, any issues arising with playing a scaled one? Or do you see this, like, creative freedom as more of a benefit rather than a setback? Um, in a way, it's uh, more freeing because, I mean, I can let my mind wander and create things that are maybe not necessarily what's common to Thetis. But um, at the same time, Liz is going into a situation where he could make the wrong step at any moment. And uh, something that may seem common or right for him could end up getting him completely in trouble in that world. I do not know. And that is honestly what excites me about the prospect of playing this character for this campaign. Hmm. Interesting. And I, I'm going to close up this interview section with um, this question. So, like, what I know you don't know much about Dragon Age, but from the little parts you've like learned from the little in character chat that you've had and just seeing other people's interviews, what aspect of the DA universe would you most be excited about exploring with your character and maybe even out of character as well? I think the two thing, well, three things that would really capture his fascination the most would be uh, blood magic uh, and the ramifications of that. Uh, mainly the, um, I forget the term for him, but uh, I know we have a few other players that are playing as the, basically that kind of race, uh, the Awoken type creatures or something like that. I, I'm yeah. <laughs> um but the just those dynamics the, there are those two parts i think he would be very fascinated with because it's something again kind of different from the rest of the world and also he's coming into a world where he knows that the last things that anybody had really of his race were violent and just of a place of bad basically mm. And he'd probably see these things as, well, I'm not bad. Why are these inherently bad? Yeah. On the flip side of that, I really feel like he would kind of find solace in some of the teachings of the Templars that I've heard a little bit about. Uh, just, I, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to say without knowing anything about the world. Um, but from what I have gathered, I think those would be the, his real starting points of interest to kind of find out what that's all about. Mm, that's interesting. Cause the two that, the two things you've mentioned, they do actually correlate quite a bit. Oh, um, they're actually like in opposition. So I think that would be like kind of interesting to see like how he would process that and what direction he'd end up going, like oh, having right. finally understand, stood it. I am going to share with you what my personal biggest reservation is for you as a player, and I'd like for you to respond to that once I'm finished explaining to you what my reservation is. Of course. And I will preface this by saying that it has nothing to do with the fact that you're not as familiar with the lore or the world. I'm not concerned about that. I know that you're a strong role player. I loved how you, what you did with Felix. I loved how you're thinking out of the box with the scaled ones and stuff. Thank you. So my biggest reservation is, so last year you auditioned, and then, unfortunately, you didn't make it. Right. And after you didn't make it, your reaction to that and your attitude towards that, uh, I noticed. Um, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I, I, I completely understand. I, and I've actually kind of tried to touch base on this in the Discord chats a bit. I, I'm sorry I cut you off. I didn't mean yeah. to. Yeah. So... So I guess what I'm trying to say, you clearly know what I'm talking about, uh, but for the people who are viewing and watching, um, you retracted a bit, 
Uh, I'm sure that it's disappointing for anyone to not make it in. Yes. But compared to other people's reaction of, of their disappointment, yours, at least for me, was, I have to be 100% honest, I was very underwhelmed by the way that you reacted to that. So given, Mike, that that is my biggest reservation for you as a player, how do you respond to that? I agree with you completely. Uh, last year, I came into the process of Harry Potter, uh, which is a franchise I really cared about. And I came into the process with a character I had gone very deeply into his own lore and everything. And so when I wasn't chosen, I, I do admit I personally was kind of devastated and I went about it a very bad way. I, I, I apologize publicly to anyone I affected with that. It was my own issues that I kind of force on others that I didn't mean to. Um, however, this year, one, I'm going into a series I don't really know, so I'm not as invested with it. And two, I'm also coming at this with a character that I really just kept at a complete and total concept. He's I haven't really developed him. I, I feel it will be better if I save that to if I get chosen. So I'm hoping that with those two uh, places, I hopefully will. Yeah. Anything happens. 100% <laughs> totally get that. I know that some people may say, oh, well, you really should be fleshing out your character. But in this sort of like situation, you know, totally 100% agree that it might be more intelligent or more strategic to save a lot of that till after, you know, have the premise of the character, which you do have. I think you have enough to play with. Um, and then just see what happens, so. Okay, so I'm gonna just set the scene here really quick. It's dark for a while as you make your way down the path. And then suddenly you see this golden thing. And it actually reminds you a lot of the statues that you've seen from where you come from. And for a moment, you mistake it to be fire. And you're far, you're far away that you can't quite discern what it is. Intrigued, Liz would continue on. You draw closer towards it um, and see that it is actually semi-transparent, but it appears to be coming from a small hole in this little nook in the wall. Uh, he will uh, approach it uh, cautiously, but he, his curiosity is definitely piqued at this point. He would examine it first uh, to see if there was anything that would possibly harm him from touching it. Uh, and if nothing is there, then yes, he would probably try to uh, examine it by touch next. You peer at it and you can't seem to discern that there's anything particularly risky about this. So you extend your hand towards it and it goes straight through and it actually illuminates the features on your hand. You can see every scale, every knuckle. And it's then you realize that this is light. Specifically, this is the first time you've seen sunlight. Uh, assuming that it's uh, large enough, he would try to uh, make his way through. Uh, if not, he would see if it was possible to make the opening larger. You, um, it's a very tight fit, but you can crawl through. Um, the light is blinding. You have to wince a little bit. Um, your, your eyes are definitely more suited towards a more dark environment because where you come from is a very dark, deep place. So you crawl through and come into this very open, airy cap, uh, cabin. And when you look around, you realize there are buildings around you. They're very different to the buildings. You recognize they're very geometric in shape. And you see these large statues of figures that are much more akin to like a primate, not a reptile. 
and they're kind of in like an X type stance. And one of them is holding up what appears to be a large maul, some a great sword. And they're scattered about, some even engraved into the building itself. Um, he would immediately take out a small uh, notebook and ink pot uh, and dipping a claw into the ink, he would start to uh, scribe what he is viewing and even try to take uh, some sketches as he walks about. Mm -hmm. As you do so, suddenly you hear a very peculiar sound. It sounds kind of like metal striking the stone and it's very repetitive and it just keeps going and it's a bit further down the cabin. Cabin, You can't quite make out what it is, but you can hear it. He would probably guess it's somebody mining something. Okay. And so along the... Yeah. Okay. He'd probably uh... be familiar with this. F familiar with this sort of sound, he would actually uh, 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 smile, uh, not unpleasant smile, but unsettling, just being a reptile. <laughs> uh, he would then um, uh, follow the sound. Um, unfortunately, uh, getting closer, he would probably start to wince as... Uh, his ears are a bit more developed, but um, uh, he would still approach um, nonetheless. You approach and you come across a large wall that appears to have these little blue stones encrusted in it. You're very familiar with these. They're very common where you come from. Your people probably use them for rituals or enchantments. Um and you see this figure um, mining to, to get at this uh, mysterious glowing ore. And judging by the curvature of the hips and the shape, you can tell this is a woman. Um, she's shorter than you. Um, and she's grunting with effort as she is mining. And you have never seen this strange creature before. It looks a lot like the primate type statues you have seen. He would honestly stand there for a moment and actually sketch this new being before approaching or trying to make contact. Mm -hmm. uh, after, um, after his little sketch, he would uh, probably uh, try to gather their attention without being too alarming if possible. Um, do you kind of like clear your throat or just make a sound? Uh, he probably would, but it would probably come out more of a hiss. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that sound would be alarming to this person if you know anything about, if people watching know what <laughs> Dragon Age is. <laughs> so this woman um, gives like a startled, <gasps> she gasps, she grabs her pickaxe and turns around. Um, when you see her, probably to a lizard person, this thing is very ugly. Um but to people of her uh, race, she's actually quite pretty. However, one thing that is very discernible about this person is a mark on her cheek that kind of goes in a curve. Um, she turns around in her, with her pickaxe and she's like, who's there? Where are ye? I, I, uh, sorry, I mean not to alarm. Are ye a ghoul or something? You're not going to hurt me already, mister. No, that would not be my intention, unless you intend harm with that device. She kind of looks at the pickaxe and then looks at you very distrusting. You don't look like any darkspawn I've seen. Darkspawn? I am unfamiliar with the term. You may know me as a skilled one. She thinks about that, and she's like, I've never heard of that, but good for ye. Um, well, I'm sure you've seen Darkspawn if you've come through this cabin. This woman actually kind of looks a little bit like them, uh, not nearly as ugly. She doesn't have their sharp, gnashing teeth, but you notice she's very pale. She even has, like, 
the the dark circles under her eyes like they have even some sores on her as well do you speak of the plagued ones well the aspors that's one way of putting it but yeah yeah they're ugly little things i have met such the forsaken it is sad i mean i suppose someone um she's very taken aback by that and she kind of looks down and she's like i they can make you sick and then you can turn into one if you're not careful i wish to help if you would allow she kind of like cocks her head and you actually get the impression that this person hasn't been shown a lot of kindness in their life because she looks surprised at this in fact her mouth is slightly agape and she goes to say something but the words fall back into her throat and she says nothing uh he would con without her saying anything he would continue on my people have dealt with the plagued ones for quite some time some have even befallen to them however we have found a way to help if caught early i am not sure if it will help you but i would like to try if i am able i'd really like that mister do you want to take a seat at my camp that would be preferable all right well come this way you best keep up because i don't slow down and she starts she takes off immediately she's uh, pretty fast <laughs> you find that he actually keeps with you mm. uh quite well but in more long strides than uh actual speed uh, yeah once he as soon as he finds your camp he would probably uh sit immediately close to a fire if there is one or try to start one from whatever area you have your fire at and uh you would start seeing him pull out uh some fruits and herbs that you may or may not recognize depending on how deep you have gone mm -hmm. uh and he would start to create a concoction of sorts um you do so um and now that the fire is more closely like illuminating her features you can see just how sick this person is you from seeing the way she is, you realize that she is beyond your help. It's too late. He nonetheless would try because he truly wishes to help this being, being the first person he's met. And also because he is truly unsure if even his medicines that he knows would help and if it does, it might have a better reaction for her than even his people. So still, with the intent to help, he would continue to create the uh, elixir. You continue to do so, and she's just kind of wringing her hands a little bit. You notice they're kind of uh, burnt and chafed, uh, which doesn't surprise you because the ore, whatever word your people have come up with for that you know it does burn you if you it's very very harmful um however she was able to mine it um which even your people need to take extra precautions when doing so he would reach into his bag uh while he's still creating this elixir and produce a small jar of a salve um and sets it uh, by her feet while he works. Uh, this should help the burning. On my hands? Yes. Can you eat it? Uh, not preferable, but it will have no adverse affections. Oh, excellent. All I needed to know. And <laughs> she'll start putting it on her hands. And she will actually eat it probably uh, make sickens you to it, see this but she's obviously it hungry does, but uh for her it actually would probably have a slightly sweet sour taste 
Um, for him, it's uh, kind of like seeing somebody uh, eat, well, like Vix or something. It's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> so you can eat it, but why would you do it? <laughs> so yeah, she's like taking scoops of this out and eating her eating it. And um like judging by how skinny she is, the rags she's wearing, how disheveled her hair is. I mean, your people have have poor the poor as well. Um, this is not an unfamiliar concept to you. Seems it's not just your people that has this. Seems it's everywhere. He immediately would uh, start to feel bad because he's he's personally seen people he knows fall to this sort of state. And <laughs> it's not something that they came back from. So it, it, it hurts. But nonetheless, he finishes the elixir and... Before handing it to her, he would emphasize that he's not sure if it will help, but he w he wants to try. I will. May as well try. And she'll take a drink. She coughs and splutters a little bit. It doesn't taste too nice. That just um, hardly does. <laughs> All right, so how long before it's supposed to, you know, de ghoulify me? If it works, it should show effects by morning. Oh, well, that's nice at least. So what did you say your name was again? <laughs> oh, you got an abbreviation of that. <laughs> I do not. Perhaps you would help me with such a thing. No, you kind of look like a lizard, so... Lizard. I like it. I shall... From now on, when I meet more of your kind, be known as Lizard. <clears throat> she kind of snorts and laughs a little bit. Aye, that seems very appropriate. You know, I have an aunt Liz. She makes cookies when she can afford it, but it's a nice name for a nice little lizard. And I apologize. I don't believe I caught your moniker. Uh, you can call me Nadesta. And, um, Nadesta. Don't, I don't know if you've heard of my people, but I'm a dwarf. I come from a little further up top. Well, Nadesta, you have a very nice name. Well, thank you. Just a small person. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Um, well, I'm sure you will grow to be quite a beautiful creature. Oh, no, I'm not a child. We're just this short. <laughs> oh. I do apologize. That's okay. A lot of people make that mistake. <laughs> what brings you up here, sir? If if I've never seen you, then my people would never have seen you. And for you to exist, you, you'd be from way, way down. That is correct. And yet not at the same time. But that is not quite important for now. I am here, well, to help, if allowed. I will, I mean, if your crazy little potion is going to get all the dark spawn taint out of me, then I suppose you helped plenty enough. Well, thank you, Nidessa. I came here expecting quite a more hostile reaction to my being. Well, I did contemplate killing you with my pickaxe, so... Well, I'm kind of glad I didn't, but <laughs> I, well, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> well, it's quite good that you didn't. Otherwise, I'd have to take action. Though, 
your remains would have created quite a study afterwards. But that's neither here nor there. Okay. <laughs> she kind of is just like, all right. <laughs> she looks very awkward at that. Um, you know what's strange, Liz? Uh, for me, quite a lot. But continue. <laughs> you know, I've been really mistreated by my people. And I think you're the first, I don't know what I'd call it, foreigner I've ever met. And the first thing you wanted to do was help me. I mean, all you lizard folk must be pretty nice people, if that's the case. We are of a varying people. Our first intent is to help. Our second is to observe. We pray we don't need to attempt our third. Then I'm glad I didn't take a pickaxe to your head. And she I, smiles at you. <laughs> and I'm glad that your brain is not in a jar. Ah, I see. <laughs> so the two of you will continue talking for a while. Uh, this girl is very pleasant company. Um, she's very funny too. Um, and she seems to very much enjoy being treated nicely. And you just wanting to help this, this makes you happy, you know? Um, and eventually it gets to the point where it's late and it's time to sleep. Um, Mr. Liz, would you like to camp here for the night? I would enjoy that greatly. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so, um, you camp there for the night and before long, what you assume as morning rolls around because again, you see that golden light streaking through cracks in the ceiling. Um, and it's a beautiful sight, but it's kind of thrown off by the fact that you've awakened to coughing and spluttering. And when you look over at Nadezda, she's haunched over, she's paler than before. Your potion didn't work. He would move to her side and try to comfort her best he could. All the while, um, I am sorry, Nadessa. It seems my medicine was of no help. Um, she goes to say something, but then coughs. Uh, she hacks up a little bit of blood and it's not red, it's black. Uh, she looks up at you and she kind of gives like a, a small smile and she's like, aye, that's all right. Hey, Liz, I really don't want to turn into one of those things. I understand. Could you do me one last kindness? If I must, I will. All right. She sighs and uh, you see a tear straight down her face. It was nice meeting somebody good before I go. Thank you, Mr. Liz. I want you to know you will be remembered. And not by just me, if I have anything to say about it. Uh, he then, um, in his rite of passage, would uh, basically implant his uh, claws into your skull. Yeah. You, uh, you end her life. It's very quick and painless. And your words obviously resonated with her when you told her she would be remembered. You don't know this culture, but you know you've realized that having told her she would be remembered is something very deep and meaningful for this people. And she dies with a smile on her face. Liz would actually mourn her for a few days. She probably didn't know it, but he truly did make a, a impact upon his life. Just that short meeting. 
uh, he would then um, prepare her to the rights that his people know uh, and uh, he would d destroy her body by flame in the end. Mm -hmm. um, hoping that if not her people's ways that she would still go to a peaceful after there. Greetings and salutations all. Lizard here. I have come to this land of Thetis in the hopes to help. In what I have seen in my short time here, it is needed, but I still fear that I will be turned away. I implore you all to accept my help and ultimately my people. Thank you, and please think of me in what is to come. <laughs>